Hi, Chris Albany, Director of Education with Real Estate Academy of Orlando. Uh, back with another math problem. Today we're going to be solving a math problem that gives our students probably the most anxiety of, of all the other math problems. This is amortizing a mortgage. Now, amortizing a mortgage is not a very complicated uh, math problem once you learn the formula. We really only have three steps and we just repeat that depending on how many uh, numbers of payments the question is asking us for. Um, but to begin with, let's look at the question. And this is a question that's uh, typically the type that you would see whether it's the state exam or the uh, school test. We have a buyer has applied for a 20-year mortgage of $65,000 at 5 and 5 eighths percent interest. How much of the $452.23 monthly payment paid in the second month will apply to the principal? So what we have in here is they tell us the loan amount, $65,000. We always needed that information. They tell us the monthly payment, which is $452.23. And they tell us what the interest rate is, 5 and 5 eighths percent. And what we're trying to solve is how much of our payment is applied to interest only. Now, every monthly payment for your mortgage is split into two different parts. We've got one part that's going to interest and another part that's going to principal. Let's take a look at just a illustration of what that might look like. So this rectangle I'm drawing here, this is going to represent your typical monthly payment. Now let's say this is the monthly payment for uh, month number one of, in this case, a 20-year loan. Now this top portion that we see here, this is going to be our principal payment, or P-R-I-N, and the bottom portion of this rectangle, the largest portion, is the interest. Now over time, the principal amount that you that's applied to principal each month is going to increase and the amount that's going to be applied to interest is going to decrease each month and then at the end of our loan term so in this case again 20 years our last monthly payment may look something like this where the very bottom here is what's left being applied to interest however the majority of our final payments is going to be applied to principal and ultimately we'll have a zero balance at the end of our uh, 20th year of mortgage payments so this is what we're trying to calculate in this question is specifically how much is going to be applied to the interest and then how much is going to be applied to the principal Okay, so now that we've got that uh, down, let's take a look at how do we actually solve this problem here. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need three pieces of information. We need the term, we need the interest rate, and we need the monthly payment. And they give us all of that in the question. However, when it comes to the interest rate, they give it to us as a percentage, five and five eighths percent. It would have been much nicer if they gave it to us in a decimal format because then we'd be able to plug that number right into our calculator and it'd be much easier to move on to step one here. However, we do need to uh, transfer this from a percentage into a decimal so we can use this in our calculator. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So we've got 5% plus 5 eighths percent. And this will give us our total interest of five and five eighths. So I'm writing it out like this so you can see exactly what's happening with, with each part of the interest here. Now the 5%, we're going to turn this right into a decimal. Now when we're turning things into a decimal, we take the decimal place, which in this case is right after the five, or to the right of the five, move it two places to the left. So we move one place and two place and add our decimal and at zero if necessary. So in our example here, 5% becomes 0 0.05. And that's our decimal version of 5%. So that one's pretty easy. Now take a look at the 5 eighths percent here. Now at first this might be a little bit confusing. Where do we put the decimal? First we have to create a decimal version of the fraction. So we're going to do the fraction first. So 5 eighths is the same thing as 5 divided by 8, or 5 divided by 
8. So we take 5 divided by 8 and we get a number of 0 0.625 but remember this is still a percent it's 0 0.625 percent and just like we did for the 5 percent above we're going to need to move the decimal place two places to the left so let's go ahead and do that so one two and we end up with let's change our color so we can see what we're doing we end up with point zero zero six two five so this is point zero zero six two five now we have the two pieces to add together this is our five-eighths percent converted to a decimal and this was our five percent converted to a decimal and we'll add these together here so 0 0.05 plus 0 0.00625 equals 0 0.05625. Now this is the number, this is our interest rate, and we're going to use this to calculate our formula going forward. Okay, so now we've got our interest rate. The next thing we're going to look at is how do we actually solve this problem? So like I said earlier, we need three things to solve the problem. We need to know what our principal amount is, we need to know what our interest rate is, and we need to know what our payment amount is. Now again, they gave us the principal balance of 65,000, and they gave us the payment of 452.23, and then the interest rate, we had to convert that ourselves, and that was 0 0.05625. So let's go ahead and put in our so numbers here. Let's take a look at our three steps here. Reference. Step one, we take our principal balance, multiply that by the interest rate, and then divide that number by 12. Now that's gonna tell us from payment number one how much of that is applied to just the interest. Now step two is to take that interest portion and subtract that from the full monthly payment. So the full monthly payment minus the portion applied to interest is gonna give us the amount that's gonna be applied to the principal. Now the final step is to take our starting principal balance, subtract out how much we just applied to that principal balance, and that's gonna leave us our new principal balance. So here we have our first step completed. $65,000 loan amount times our interest rate, 0 0.05625, and divide that number by 12. And we end up with the interest payment of $304.69. Now, they told us in the question that our monthly payment was $452.23. So we gave that to the bank, and now we just figured out that $304.69 of that was applied to interest, so how much was applied to principal? Well, we just take the monthly payment, 452.23, subtract out the interest payment that we just figured out, the 304.69, and the balance is how much is going to be our principal reduction. Okay, so now we have $65,000 minus out what we just paid in our principal payment, $147.54, leaving us with our new principal balance of $64,852 and 46 cents. Now this is all three steps that we need to do. Now we've just completed everything for payment number one. Now what we're going to do, I like to say rinse and repeat. We're looking for the answer for what is going to be the amount applied to principal for payment number two. So we're going to do the exact same thing one more time. Now the most important step though is we're no longer starting with $65,000. This is what our beginning balance was, but our new balance is now 64,852.46. That's the only change that we're gonna do here. So for step four, we're going to take our new principal balance, multiply that by our interest rate, and then divide that number by 12. Okay, so we've got our new principal balance, 64,852.46 multiplied by our interest rate, 0 0.05625, divide the number by 12 to get the monthly interest, and we have our interest payment number two of $304. Now, it would have been 303.9959. We're just rounding that, that up a fraction of a penny to $304 even. So where are we now? Interest payment number two, just like we did for step number two, we're gonna subtract that from our monthly payment. So. Our monthly payment is still 
If we subtract out the interest payment that we paid on the second month, that's going to give us how much is going to be applied to the principal payment for month two. And let's take a look at that one. So here we are, we've got our monthly payment of $452.23 and the interest we just calculated of $304, leaving us with a principal payment of $148.23. Now this is our answer for this question here. All right, so now that we've completed the problem, let's take a look at our work and make sure that we've solved it correctly. Now, both the state exam and the school test, they are going to be multiple choice questions, so 148.23 will be one of the answers. But the other three choices are also going to be uh, very similar. You might see $304 in there. Obviously, it's, the, it's not the correct answer because we're not looking for the interest on payment number two. We're looking on the principal uh, portion of payment number two. The other thing you can look at is checking your math as you go along here. So if we take a look at our two orange boxes here uh, on the right hand side, we've got our interest for payment number one, we've got our interest for payment number one, and we've got our interest for payment number two. If you notice, the second one is 69 cents less than the first one. Remember uh, earlier we discussed that over time the amount of money that's applied to interest is going to reduce as we progress through our loan, loan term. And this is exactly what we see here. We see uh, payment number one for interest is $304.69, payment number two is $304. So we reduce by 69 cents. Now the 69 cents we took away from the interest, that should be applied to the principal uh, payment. Now we'll see that in the blue boxes here. We started with principal payment of $147.54 and that increased to $148.23. So we definitely want to see an increase because over time more and more of the monthly payment is going to be applied to the principal reduction because less and less is being applied to interest. Now that number should be exactly 69 cents difference. So $147.54 minus $148.23 there's a 69 cent difference there. So we know that we definitely have the right answer here. Well, I hope that answers your question regarding amortization. Hopefully this is a less of a scary question the next time you see it. If you have any other questions for us, uh, reach out to us at info at reaorlando.com or visit us on the web at realestateacademyoforlando.com.